Hello, and welcome to Hoop Shooting the Breeze, our show all about the hoop shoot. Each show, we catch up with past participants, volunteers, and other friends of the Hoop Shoot program. I'm McKenna Cannon, and joining me today is Faith Schoberg, a three-time national finalist who competed in 2016, 2017, and 2018 from Presque Isle, Maine. Welcome, Faith. Thank you for having me. Uh, first, I just want to say real quick, um, I'm just so grateful for all the elk I've done for my family and I. I mean, all the years I was in the hoop shoe, they're just so helpful and kind. Uh, so just thank you for that. Oh, that's awesome. We are so happy to have you here today. And as I mentioned just now, um, you know, you made it all the way to the national stage three years in a row, um, competed all six years of your eligibility. Um, and that's such a huge accomplishment. Um, what did it take uh, to make it to the, to the national finals three times? Um, I mean, I can't even count the amount of hours I put into it. Like when I was younger, just my whole life was basically dedicated to just, <laughs> just going to the gym. I had to convince my parents to, to take me and I just shoot over and over again. Um, just because, I mean, I was so competitive. I mean, I still am competitive, but the competition just meant so much to me. I didn't want to, because all my friends knew about it. My family knew about it. I didn't want to let them down. So I just worked so hard um, just to try to get better every single year. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, it always is so inspiring to me to hear how much time and effort hoop shooters are putting into the gym, you know, going in before school, coming in after anytime there's gym space, you know, going in and, and shooting baskets, which is like so cool. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, and, you know, you kind of touch on this a little bit, but we know that the hoop shoot um, creates gritty kids. And that's the special component that um, pushes people to succeed no matter the adversity or, or trials, um, even after failure. And in your three years at the finals, um, you narrowly missed um, the championship title um, twice and you placed third as your, as your highest um, score. Um, how did you bounce back each year um, determined to try again? Um, I mean, well, so every year, uh... I knew the nationals were a thing, obviously. And it was always my goal to always just make it as far as I could. Mm -hmm. So then when I finally did make it to nationals that one year, I think I placed uh, fifth my first year there. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, wow, like this is actually possible. Like I could possibly win this thing. Mm -hmm. um, so after that kind of, it's like a wake up call. Like, okay, this is, this is within reach. If I just keep working even harder each year, uh, it could happen. Um, so yeah, that's what just kind of pushed me to, to keep trying each year, just not give up. Uh, and I also just love doing it. So I didn't want to ever stop doing it for any reason. Uh, so that's kind of just what, what made me want to keep going and work even harder. Oh, that's awesome. I love what you said about, you know, realizing, oh, this is possible. And I think that that's like such a good motivator um, for people when they realize like, this isn't within my grasp, this is within my ability to succeed. Um, so that's, that's fantastic. Um, besides the multiple trips to the national finals, um, do you have any experiences or um, people or hoop shoot memories that really stick out to you from the years? Um, I mean, yeah. So one of the biggest things, like I didn't quite realize it until I got older, I'm like 12, 13 ish. Um, it's just how much time and effort all the volunteers put in. Mm -hmm. Like I knew I, I just would show up and do my fellow shows and leave. But once I realized how much it took, I just had a great appreciation for, I mean, the elk as a whole and everything. Um, so yeah, that definitely made me just appreciate just <laughs> putting in work that way um, and just giving all I got. Uh, another memory I had uh, one year, I don't I have no idea which year it was, but there was a kid that lived like 15 minutes away from me and he made it to the New Englands as well. And so we were friends with their family. So that was a, that was a special moment for sure. It's being able to actually like, have someone that I knew we could talk to and just make the experience a little less nerve wracking. Uh, so yes, that was, that was awesome. Oh yeah. And I think that that's great when you can share your hoop shoot experience um, with someone, you know, and we, we see that a lot with people who have siblings who compete or close friends. Um, yeah. But it's, it's, it is nice to have a comforting face. And I, I do know that like, after a while when you're competing, you know, the, the elks themselves become, you know, familiar faces to you. Like you said, you, you realize all the effort they're putting in. They, 
become part of the experience, which is, which is awesome. So, um, so now you are a senior in high school, is that correct? Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. And you are still playing basketball. You're a really accomplished, um, high school player and you've earned all conference honors, if I'm correct, um, in your region of Maine. And, um, what do you feel are the most important aspects of being an accomplished athlete? Um, I think the biggest thing, at least for me, is just that I love basketball. Um, I mean, it sounds <laughs> basic, mm-hmm. but if I didn't actually love the game and want to play every single time, then I would never get as far as I have. I know there's a lot of people that play, I mean, do sports, do anything just because like their friends do it or because their parents want them to, but they never actually care about what they're doing. Um, and I just, I mean, you could just never be successful if you don't actually put everything you have into what you're doing so from a young age I just realized that basketball kind of was my thing it was something that I knew if I was I was showing improvement I was getting better and I all at the same time I was just loving what I was doing so it was kind of easy to just be like okay this is this is my thing so any opportunities I had I just try to get better you know try to get in the gym (laughs) to my parents bring me to the gym please (laughs) Um, just because that was what made me happy and Mm -hmm. I was also getting so many opportunities from the game itself so once I, I realized all that, I just kind of committed my life to, to this game that I love. I love that. No, that's a great sentiment. And just having the passion for the sport is, you know, creates that drive in you to, to, to become better. So I think that's, that's really cool. Um, so going way back in time here, um, in 2016, we asked you on your um, national finals trading card um, for your dreams for the future. And you shared that um, your two dreams were to become a WNBA player and a physical education teacher. What are your dreams for the for future right now? <laughs> um, so unfortunately, I'm not quite on track to make it to the WNBA. <laughs> We'll see, but no. Um, Dream big. <laughs> <laughs> that was my goal. But now, uh, just more realistically, uh, going to college next year. Uh, right now, I'm thinking about going for physical therapy. Um, but still, beyond high school, I want to have basketball be a part of my life. Just because, I mean, I, I do love it. So, I'm going to play. I, right now, I'm planning on playing basketball in college as well. And then, past that, um, I would love to just, like, coach a team or do something to, and that just involves basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm not going to play pro or anything, but just to be around basketball, um, I mean, that is just what I would really dream to do because I just love the game. And I love to, be able to take my, I mean, all the hard work I put in all my years, all the things I've learned, and then just distribute that to other kids uh, and help them get better and just uh, grow the same passion that I did for the game. That's awesome. Yeah, no. Um... It's so cool. Have you thought about which college you're going to yet? I know that some athletes kind of like think about that the summer before um, their senior year. Is that something that you've, you've been applying for? Yeah, well, I started the application process, um, so I'm still getting that done. Mm-hmm. So there's, I don't want to go outside the state, really, just because, I mean, much <laughs> big to me. I also want to be within a region. I also don't want to stay home. So I can, you know, I, Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Makes sense. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking at a few few schools in Maine um, that also, I mean, I want a, a good physical therapy program mm-hmm. as well as a good basketball program. So yeah, it's a few different schools I'm looking at right now. Very cool. Um, all right. So I have another kind of trip down memory lane for you. Um, in 2018, we interviewed you after your final finals, um, your final finals, your <laughs> last trip to the finals. Um, And you shared that your life wouldn't be the same if I hadn't participated in the hoop shoot. Um, Do you still think that's true today? Or do you feel that the hoop shoot kind of set you up for for more success in your future? Definitely. Um, So, yeah, I mean, the hoop shoot, obviously, like, working out for, I just practiced my fellow shooting and all this stuff. But the lessons I did learn just from shooting um, are way beyond any basketball skills. Uh, I think the biggest thing I learned is the power of hard work. Like when I, I mean, I just noticed that when I shot more, went in the gym more, got more shots up, that is when I did better in competitions. So I mean, the same thing applies to every single thing. When I, you know, when I study more, I get better grades or 
anything in that sense. So, I mean, just from a young age, when I saw that the more work I put in, the better results I got, I kind of took in everything that I, um, that I cared about. So now when I'm faced with anything, I know that it, I mean, it's true. When you work harder, you get better results. Mm -hmm. So that is the biggest thing that the hoop shoe taught me just because I'd always put so much work into it. And that's when I was getting, you know, success. So that's definitely the biggest thing that the hoop shoe taught me. That's yeah. Um, yeah. Hard work creates success. And, and I do think that the, the hoop shoot really does instill that kind of mentality into our, into our participants. Um, so to wrap it up here, kind of, do you have any advice um, for future hoop shooters, especially those that are kind of slugging through the, the challenges of today's world or facing any adversity? Yeah, I mean, I know things have been tough lately, just with COVID and everything. Um, sometimes it can be hard to just build up the motivation to do anything. Mm -hmm. But I mean, come at what I said before, the most important thing is to just have a passion for something. So the best, I mean, just to, to use your time with things that you enjoy, things that motivate you to be, be, uh, be a better person and just, you know, make your, make your dreams come true. So mm -hmm. uh, for those people, I mean, I think the important thing is to just find what you love and to do as much as you can. That's uh that's just how you find happiness. That's how you, you grow as a person. Yeah, that's great advice. <laughs> yeah. And thank you so much um, for joining me today, Faith. Um, we'll be all rooting for you um, across the nation, all of our Elks volunteers as you're on your journey to college and beyond. So it's been so great catching up. Um, and we'll be back next month um, for another exciting interview with Hoop Shooting the Breeze. Um, but before we go, the service scorecard season starts right now. Um, it is a virtual engagement opportunity um, combining service, the elk spirit of volunteerism, and fun. It's for everybody. Everyone any age can participate, um, and participants have the chance to win a $100 donation to the charity of their choice. Um, Faith, could you please share this month's theme? Yeah, so October's theme is off the court with service projects based on being active, sports, and your community. Uh, visit enf.elks.org slash service SC to participate. All right. Awesome. Thanks again, Faith. Um, and again, we'll be back next month um, to announce the winners of this month's October's scorecard. Um, and in the meantime, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you liked the show, leave a thumbs up on this video and let us know what you think in the comments. Until next time, best wishes. <laughs>